Friday here at Cork Stats. Powered by the Mayo Media Net and here on YouTube, presented by Jock Market, that brand new daily fantasy app where we actually make money. Download the app for free. Use the promo code MMN. They're going to match the first 100 bucks for free. If it's free, it's for me. Man, I'm going to like this show. <laughs> I hope you like it so nice because I had to do it twice. Oh my goodness gracious, would you believe it? If you're really used to listening to this a bit earlier than normal, I am very, very sorry. There'll be a couple apologies that we'll talk about routine really quick before we get into the three pillars of profit and the fastest show at MLB. Absolutely anywhere. My goodness gracious, first, my sorry to myself. I, man, was scrambling behind, running around like a chicken without a head as Always, I didn't run my sound test. I recorded an entire show, the normal, usual, heartfelt, all that great stuff. And I didn't have the audio going. I didn't sound test, which I do every day because I got off my routine. Because I was at the state fair yesterday, I had to break my routine by recording the prior day's show the day early and I made every single mistake that you could make some of it was not my fault I liked the Red Sox as they were going up against Austin Voth except of course Baltimore got postponed after I had finished recording that threw off all the pitching I didn't notice and then of course they got Kramer who we would not have liked he's been a bit better and then I recommended Cincinnati they were playing in a stupid cornfield oh my god I feel ridiculous I obviously was looking to play in Cincinnati, the pinball machine. I feel like a mook. I feel like a momo. Hopefully people picked up on that. I'm really sorry. And I'm going to donate again to St. Jude's. That's usually what I do when I F up and step on a giant rake that might have hurt other people. I go do something good for people who is, you know, maybe don't have it as nice as we do having the ability to bet money on American baseball. All right, so let's get into the three pillars of profit. Oh, gosh, that feels just so very dumb. I rattled off a half an hour of the things that we do, me and you the cork stats crew except it was just me <laughs> flapping my big silly gums with nothing coming out which is probably some people's wish <laughs> all right let's get into the first pillar i guess it should come out really good i already did all of this it's the 812 stack attack brought to you by jock market oh yeah yeah i can't believe i'm doing this again it's the astros against adam oller who's not any good place for the athletics they're not any good 763 era 169 whip 8985 ops that's not any good the xfip and expected era it's a new stat i've added very hard to make the sheet but it's on fan graphs i tested it and i like it those are over six and a quarter 14 percent k is really bad 11 and a half percent walk is really bad 22 csw is really bad what does that lead you to him forcing the ball in the zone 88 percent zone contact rate where we get lots of bad math 53 fly ball 12 barrel equals the nearly 400 expected woba and two and a half home runs per nine all the things we usually look to sink our teeth into no splits issues here 279 minimum BA lefty and righties 579 minimum slug and six home runs each Allah doesn't care who he stinks against it's the problem is the fastball but th this is the issue gosh I just covered all this stuff I thought I did such a good job all right let's try and do it a bit more concise this time pitchers that have bad fastballs sometimes split it into other bad fastballs but fastball hitters are fastball hitters he throws a four-seamer, 27 use, 565 X-log. He throws a cutter, 26 use, 500 X-log. He throws a sinker, 16 use, not to be outdone, 951 X-log. The problem is these pitchers are not disparate enough to have hitters guessing. You don't have a good enough breaking profile for that. So all they see is, I don't know, what's that, 65% fastball use and a 650 expected slug on the way out. 11 of the 12 home runs on the year are from that fastball bin. That's how we like to look at those. So give me Kyle Tucker. He's been excellent the last month. 45 plate appearances against righties. Double-digit barrel. 263, 289, 930. Remember, that's our triple slash BA ISO OPS. Yes, ISO for the total base props, right? Um, batting average for the singles. ISO, isolated slugging, that's extra base hit rate for the total base props. And then OPS, which we love, which plays across all daily formats. Probably the most important thing for jock market. Also, half a point for a bat in jock market. Remember that. Our triple slash is the, I don't know, let's call it the D-Gen triple slash because that's what pays the bills in betting, not average OBP and slug. I don't think anybody cares about that anymore. Like, that's not even a fantasy thing anymore. So give me Kyle Tucker. He's killing it. 
and we like to zoom out on the fastball bin in particular. So I ran Kyle Tucker year to date against right handed four seamers, sinkers, and cutters. Right, he's going to see 65%, 15% barrel, 415 expected Woba for Tucker. So that's really where he makes his bones. Also, we know he hasn't really been great for a while. He's a very, very good hitter. Sometimes recent stats are a sign of injury. We saw the way Jose Ramirez got hit in the hand, he stunk for a little while, and then all of a sudden he started hitting. It, it, the health is the sine wave a lot of times that we speak about. So sometimes that's really what I'm looking at more with recent stats. Jordan Alvarez is a perfect example. He's a phenomenal hitter. But I don't try and catch a falling knife. He's not hitting right now. He might have a bad finger or his wrist might hurt. And that's sapping the power just enough to hurt him. When he hits his first home run, he looks awesome. Then we go back him again. Because once Alvarez hits a sine wave, it's to the rest of the season. You see, I think about these things. Don't don't be looking for do, do, do. <laughs> do, do. Don't be looking for that. Tucker's an awesome hitter. Now that he's getting going, he's going to be an awesome hitter. We'll be getting paid on him, and let's continue to do that. Then we have a Ledmus Diaz gold star on the fat nose of the Cork Stats careers on all of our fantasy teams. People hear the name and say, well, he's getting it done last two weeks, especially. It's been a while, but his last two weeks, 31 plate appearances against righties. 83 con contact 12 percent barrel highlighting the contact rate there that's really important for those single parlays right if you're going to be looking for over one half total bases or a single one hit high contact plus high barrel you're getting a double digit barrel from diaz he's not like a nothing hitter 357 321 1098 ops looking pretty healthy only two home runs i would never play him for a home run prop but he is viable for total bases and certainly for singles then let's wrap it with mancini since he showed up in houston it's a small set three of 11 two home runs but i did zoom out on that fastball bin against righties 54 hard hit rate that's 95 miles an hour remember directly related to slug with a 12 and a half percent barrel so the underpinning stats are there for mancini to do some work today he hasn't even played every day so if he's playing and he's in has that good spot he'll probably be low price in dfs where we want to get at him he'll probably be low price in jock market where we want to get at him and total base prop see that's maybe where that will get you off it right you see i love this again i just covered all this stuff but why the show is so very good i one of the reasons i think at least is you get the name but now it's about where to put it on the board, which board to put it on, because we're actually playing four different games at once. So I also want to stop and mention something I mentioned before. Um, I notice lots of handicappers play my guys, put my, let's say my picks, but they put our picks out there. That's fine. I want to set the market. I've never been one of those people like, oh, look, you're stealing my stuff. No, it's in most sincerest form of flattery. I know for a fact there are very prominent and very professional listeners here. I know that because I have the DMs because they usually want me to give them the information first or at night. The answer is you got to pay for that stuff like everyone else. All right, so remember the nuance and the context. We're mentioning the single hitters. Listen, you want that high BA. You want to be in the top part of the lineup. We're looking to weigh the scale with indicators. At least that's what I've done when creating the formula for these things. Home team is bad. Heavy favorite, believe it or not, is bad because you could lose lose the ninth frame if you're home. If you're road and heavy favorite, that's awesome because now you're expecting circular rotation, but you're also going to be on the road in short the ninth frame. That home team can really hurt you. Houston is at home today. So that usually gets me off some of the heavier stuff, especially if a hitter is batting fourth or later, right? Because again, everything predicated on plate appearances, that is the one thing that's universal in this exercise. Every single board showing up to the plate is the only time that we can produce, where we need to produce. I guess in draft games you could score a run, but that's not when it happens, right? No one is aiming to get hit by a pitch and score five runs. It's just not how it goes. You can't score more than one run. Anyway, so you got to get up, you got to get on, and that's what we're looking for. So give me Tucker Diaz and Mancini. Then let's get over to the White Sox from the wrong side of the track. Those pale hoes going up against Daniel, Chuck, Norris. 690 ERA, 147 whip, 815 OPS to FIP and deserve our ERA or north of 5. 32% K is very good, but a 16% walk is not. 14% swing strike is pretty damn good. 51 first strike is not. Now, you see the ground ball rate up over 42, which is generally where we at least used to call a a pitcher, a ground ball pitcher, however, I think you have to expand on that a bit more. Because 44 hard hit, 15 barrel, and two home runs per nine, he's not keeping the ball down, right? So again, you see how 
if you know if you follow the picture sheet again one of the tools i put out hat tip to you patrick murdoch mayo we love you so much because he's again giving me the opportunity to give you all this excellent stuff you people love so much it starts with the picture sheet you get employee team totals we do it all i run the algo we grade the games and give pitcher rankings whenever i can and star ratings with costs and stuff like that but we always begin here mail media in the morning so please you know rate review and subscribe to the audio only pod you got to download the jock market app if you want to make that money that we're making in the jm streets all right let's get up into it back with norris so the profile is not great the ba against righties is low but i think that's okay because it matches up what we're looking for from the right Sox. they do have a five he's allowed i'm sorry a 583 slug to righties on the year it's a vast majority of hitters the problem is the fastball again 37 use 863 x slug that's just as bad as you're going to see like and that means there's a location problem again contact is it's not like it's a skill allowed reverse and engineer enough of it with fastballs and it is okay because it's a it's a location thing and to me that's a skill so the forcing location is garbage so we're looking for Luis Robert last 30 days against lefties 5% blast rate always we're looking for that barrels great the barrel rate was low but again barrels low but blast is high that trumps it that supersedes it ideal subset we're looking for the purest form of contact 500 ba 208 12 75 triple slash in net frame with a 375 x woba 53 percent hard hit 411 x woba against left-handed fastballs remember we isolating the hyper usage fastball we're going to be looking for right-handed hitters that hit that so robert is one of them also pollock against lefties year to date has a double digit barrel rate first place you look 279 229 811 healthy but not crazy triple slash right so you would not go after him for over one and a half total bases because the isolated slugging is below 25 percent you want to be above 25 percent iso assuming for plate appearances to get you to that at a minimum the 279 ba is pretty good check out his numbers against the fastballs from lefties 80 percent contact 18 percent barrel 431 expected wall but that's how you get it done why is pollock on the list as well he let off his last three games that he started if he's leading off he is a perfect candidate for a singles prop today if you're looking for the home run you'll be looking for eloy against fastballs on the year from lefty 75 percent hard hit rate hachi machi liberace 25 percent barrel 12 and a half blast that's how you do it if you're looking for the big dog right so you see how we kind of again you get the pieces but you have to know where to go they all play for dfs and you want to work them into your lineup they all play on jock market depending on on the price i'm not chasing anybody really up above five and a quarter anymore sorry you see the sheet does say 555 i'm going to correct it because as they split slates the pricing has changed right the necessary scoring the baseline scoring to profit has changed which makes sense because more players are now part of it part of the beauty of the full full, full slate is a jock market if a bad hitter like hits a home run, the needle doesn't move. He wasn't even on the thing. Maybe a run scores, but not enough to shift everything, right? A grand slam, let's say. Grand slam in DFS is moving those those p those pins for sure. That always is the case. Someone has that player. It's always the case. Even in single entry, it seems to be the case, which is fun. Sharpness. I'm oh, sorry. That was part of the edge and jock market. They've eliminated that. So our reaction, again, nuance and context at the center of all the work that we do. What's going to keep us ahead of the curve? Then let's finish up with the Friar Tucks from San Diego going up against Corey Abbott. This year, 5.68 ERA, 1.5 whip, 9.27 OPS. But it's a bit of a small sample, so let's look at the career. 6.3 ERA, 1.7 whip. He's not ready for the bigs, I don't think. 19% K to 14% walk. So the 14% walk is a major issue. 5% K minus walk only is going to make it worse. 27 0 swing 90 in zone contact right so he walks too many he can't induce chases has to come into the zone and then there's an unusually high amount of contact and then the type of contact is just awful for him 65 fly ball 13 barrel lefties year to date just killing abbott they have a 1089 ops and four home runs why he forces the fastball 60 percent use and it has a 92 it's coming in at 92 miles an hour here's the thing i have to do i really dove in before because i want to earn the like button and it's why you know maybe it's better off maybe the big dude upstairs was looking out for me i was talking such smack about the big 
corporate shows. You know what? Let's do it real quick. They are losing steam as the season goes on. Lots of baseball shows are doing just that. They're doing less tools. They're doing less work because they're worrying about football. Well, I'm getting the football show ready to bring you something you've never seen before. And the baseball show is getting better every single day. Make no mistake. When you look at these corporate shows, whoever's on the big cable box, you turn it on. There's a room full of writers. There is a room full of producers. There is a three rooms full of cast and crew and all of that other stuff. Here, don't get me wrong. We're not crying poverty. We are funded. We are skilled, okay? But well, we're also ruggedly handsome and witty to the nth. But we're talking apples to apples quality. You can put put me up on a stage. Let's debate this. Put me up against the big show. Put us, put MMN on the big stage, up against the big dogs, and let me wipe the floor with them. We're doing something new. We're doing something different. And that's why people are picking up where we're putting down. Because it's all about the open and honest transparency, the granular analysis, the things that we do. So let's get into the fastball and why our understanding is beginning to push to the fore of fantasy. Remember, I was trying to make my bones in fantasy because I understood that that's where the science was. That's where the sharpest players were. That's where the understanding was, the theory, the philosophy, and again, the physics of ball movement. I'm not just making this up. Remember, we've now recently been introduced to Savant and Stackcast, Track Eye, Hawkman, whatever, Hawkeye, Trackman, whatever. Just new understanding of the ball in flight. Let's get to it. Abbott, 16 inches of vertical drop on the fastball. That's not any good. 12 is about the average for starter. So, He's 33% worse. You do not want any steepness on your four-seamer. Steep in, steep out, right? If you hit a flat pitch square, it goes flat. If you hit a pitch aiming downward square, it's going to go in the opposite direction, up and out. We want fastballs. Again, they don't rise. That's a misnomer. They just don't sink as much to in relation to the field. We want it to be flat so we can throw it up in the zone and keep the distance between the bat and the ball as far as possible. There's what I was looking for when I begged for a like before. Hopefully that'll do it. Put your cartoon fingers inside us where they belong. So when we're thinking a pitcher struggles against lefties and you're going up against the Padres, give me Juan Goto since he showed up with the Padres against righties 500 through 333 14 81 OPS Soto going to be the player of the night against fastballs year to date right I don't want to just leave you with 18 plate appearance sample fastballs year to date from righties 20 barrel 18 blast a 542 x woba and 7 Shama Lama. Ooh. Lama Lama Ding Dong. Come on. He's my shimmity bop. Yeah. Love Juan Soto. He is going yard. He's going to double. He's going to do everything. All of the things for Juan Soto. Top player on the slate. Brandon Drury since he showed up to the Friar Tucks. 231, 462, 10, 45 OPS. Let's zoom out against righties. That throw fastballs, right? The right-handed fastballs are things we're looking for because that's what he's going to see. 60 use. He's going to see one. He might see five. 83 contact, 16 barrel, and three home runs. Again, the very high contact rate, the very high quality of contact rate. Drury's a very good player. We added him. He was one of these players that we were on because of the fantasy work that we do. You know, maybe that was another one. Maybe I'm be better off this show. I blew the fantasy thing before. I'll explain what happened in just a second when we wrap this big boy up. So, Brandon Drury really also checking all the boxes, right? The average a bit low, so I wouldn't play him for a single. The ISO is so high that when he makes contact, see, when he makes contact, the contact's very good. So we want to get with either a total base prop, backfill him into daily, certainly jump on him in jock market if he's at $5 or below. And that's how we're going to make money at these things. I actually made this mistake the other day. I put Pete Alonzo in a single parlay like that. How stupid is that? It's really stupid. It, that's not a single hitter. If he makes contact, it's a double or a home run. Right? That should always be the assumption with Pete Alonso. So, again, I'm, you know, changing in, in real time. I was at F five better. They've now pulled F five money lines. You know, you can't even bet. You can't bet what they don't post because they didn't want to give us the pushes. They eventually picked up on why we were mopping the floor with them. Getting F five early bets was like my key to success for the past like two or three years. Just mopping them up. My business day was over before the sun came up. Then give us Jake the Snake Cronenworth. His last thirty five plate appearances against righties three ninety three batting average. Yeah, two fourteen and ten ninety three OPS. So Jake the Snake. Probably a good hit parlay guy as well for the Friar Tucks today. Let me see. They are, um, yeah, they are on the road. I just wanted to double check that. I knew I had it circled. I would never, I wouldn't play a single. That's another one. I probably wouldn't ever chase a singles hitter. 
at home. Like, I don't think I want that. I think I want my singles hitters on the road. Like, I'm always trying to maximize, maximize, maximize. Again, we can only cash these tickets, score these points when we're at the plate. So anything that helps to maximize plate appearances is very good. And anything that starts to hurt us, we must recognize. Because even if you have the implied team total, because that's another one, right? If you're going to score runs, you should. that's a good way to add the plate appearance. The problem is a lot of times you know, we have really good hitters and they walk sometimes. And they have to wait an hour you know, to get back up or whatever. And that walk will kill you. So if you're at home and you walk and your hitter ends up on deck and you say, how often does that happen? I think it's happened three times. Three times before I was like, all right, just had enough of this, where a hitter was on the on-deck circle. I think the last one was a couple weeks ago. It was Christian Yelich. So give me the Houston Astros, Chicago White Sox, and San Diego Padres to do the thing in the stack attack brought to you by Jock Market. Let's get up into the fantasy. And... Oh, man. Well, I alluded to it before. This section kind of stunk because I was trying something new. And so I think I'm going to do this for the NFBC players because you know, I'm setting lineups today. And I'm not really sure what else to do on Friday. We will go over bullpens, but I think we did pretty good with that on the graphic yesterday. Again, if you're a fantasy player, I think the gut of this show, the guts of this is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We mine these statistical leaderboards and then put it together for the waiver stuff. That has been just really, really impactful. Just no questions. No questions. We have added brain the jury is on every team because we picked up on them early. Uh, just keep going. Just go around and around around all year. It's been like that. The more recent hits have been uh, Aled Miss Diaz, Luis Regifo, Jose Miranda was on all of our teams. After he got dropped, you got the signal to pick him up absolutely everywhere. Kyle Wright and Bernie Singer early in the year. Even Graham Ashcraft more recently. Braxton Garrett. Reed Detmer is a huge one. I mean, like, I'm all doing really good. My bad fantasy teams are all really, really good. Uh, my hope is the season lasts long enough for me to catch everybody because my teams are on a pure. They started out very low. It's almost like when you expect the stock price at an open, like an IPO, and it opens up gap down. Nothing you can do. Now you just have to make up that ground. That's what I had to do. And now, like I said, fantasy all about whacking away at the tree. So I was thinking about like a green light, red light thing. So I realized that I... Now, I did check these. Off. Obviously, they're matched up against the weekend starters. But I realized that without having the starters at hand, it wasn't as helpful as I wanted to be. So, all right, I have a couple. So let's go with like teams that you're absolutely pushing to the fore. We already know Padres, Astros... Yankees are given, right? Absolutely. Arizona is playing in Colorado. Those are an absolute given. All your Diamondbacks, all your Rockies, absolutely. But then we have a couple other good hits, and we're looking at Mariners, Giants, White Sox, Rays, and Reds. I'm going to try and make a little graphic. I couldn't get it in time. It's so difficult. Then, look, it wouldn't matter. I recorded with no audio on your big, fat dummy. So, to a couple of the bad teams, right, that we want to keep an eye on, I just try and keep that in mind, not everybody setting lineups has time to do the minutia of all this. So, you know, yeah, of course, some easy ones. But Rockies and Diamondbacks at the four. Rays, Reds, White Sox, Giants, Mariners. Again, I'm going to look for a graphic put together. Check it out on Twitter at MLB Moving AVG. Again, hat tip to Pat Mayo allowing me to just bring you all this stuff. Without him, there's no me. Without me, there's no tools. They ain't, someone's not paying for it. I'm not going to spend my time uh, doing it. Sorry, not sorry. Dems the brakes. You know, that's how I got where I am. And then the red light. Okay, so I think, obviously, you're going to red light some of these obvious teams. Pittsburgh is trash, right? Washington is trash. Oakland is trash. The Tigers are trash. That's really not a shock. However, I have Toronto. I have Boston. Braves, Mets, and Twins. Boston... Oh, has the Yankees. So again, the, the thing I'm looking for doesn't have them crossed. I'm going to screw this up if I try and do it. So let me just get it out on a graphic. It'll be better off. Look, even with two cracks at this, I didn't get it right. But that kind of happens when you're doing it. So I'm f off Braves. I'm off Twins. I'm off Red Sox and Mets this weekend with Blue Jays. So a couple of the bigger teams. Again, I'm going to post this. You really got to follow all day if you want to do everything. You can't smush fantasy betting and all the types of daily play that we do. Trying to make the money. Trying to make the money, honey. Um, you know, in a half an hour, which was like 15 minutes, then went to 20 minutes, then went to 25 to 30. Well, we only have like 14 or 15 shows left, which again, if you if you really want to thank me and us, you know, for all the work we're doing, I, I hope the passion and stuff really pours through the show, you know, as other shows, again, are taking the foot off the gas. I'm trying to bring more and more, you know, that's what we do. 
It means a bunch to me. I don't just talk the smack. I watch the big corporate shows, and we want to be better than them. I think we're light years are. But until we get in front of people and other ones recognize, they still have, you know, they have the spot. So I want the spot, and we want the spot. We want to take it from them, you know, because I don't appreciate all the stuff that we see on some of these you know, channels that are not really talking about sports. So we want the spot and we want to put smart, high IQ, detailed, granular analysis back at the fore and have people, you know, loving baseball the way that they should instead of thinking that it's stupid because no one cool covers it. Then give us a five-star review. That one five-star review and tell you want this show picked back up. You want to see it again. It's the nut hand. That's how you get it done. Press the like button is really good. The five-star review is the nut hand. Again, we have two or three weeks left of the show. Then Anomas. Uh, so you want to say thanks on the way out. You download the Jock Market app, number one. The five-star review, number two. And the cartoon finger inside me, number three. All right, let's get into the third pillar of profit and do some bets here. Share it on the board. My gosh, I can't believe I didn't notice my audio wasn't on. I have this, like, flasher thing going on. I'm just so, again, routine, everybody. I said it was going to be at the center of it. I knew everything would go wrong. I can't believe I recommended Reds that were playing in the cornfield. Somebody just, oh, God, I... I'm going to I'm gonna donate. I will. I made up my mind. We did it once before. And that's part of the tip jar. You know, I have a Patreon page. That's where all the tools go. I know people here at Patreon are like, ugh, I don't really ask you for anything. It's, it's free, Trion, for you and me, Trion. I took, when I hit 100 bucks, I took half of it and I donated to St. Jude's. I'm going to donate another 50 bucks to St. Jude's on, you know, um, courtesy of the Cork Stats crew. Let's get this. Let's get this. Coke this ship back in the right lane, man. I mean, no, ships don't. I float in lanes anyway. God, my goodness. I'm a very smart guy. I can be very, very stupid. All right, let's get down to the bottom, baby. We're going over one and a half total bases for Juan Soto. I when I was funny, when I was typing this out, I made an error, and I almost printed over 11 and a half bases, and then I thought, like, I wonder if we should go for that. I wonder if we could find, could we find, like, an 800 to 1 on 11 bases for Soto? If anyone has a chance, he's going to do it today. I think we get a first inning double. I can't believe this play is at plus 110. That was one of the things that I dropped before. Before. Again, I mentioned why I don't get dragged for the amount of losing we've done recently. Again, like who talks about this? Oh, I lose all the time. You should follow me. I just and listen. Such is life. the The realness is the analysis, right? It's the quality analysis and, and the proof, data backed, probabilistic advantage. Okay, uh, it's math. I'm not that. You know, it's what it is. The other one is the closing line value. We have been so far ahead. Again, I, I don't talk about five cents here. We're talking about forty cents. All the time. Every, like, do we have... I'm not even sure if we... We had, we had one play the first time a price moved against us I, that I noticed was quite literally July. And people notice that, and that's why they don't come at us, because we're always in front of it. Especially, the thing I'm most proud of, the thing that handicappers, in a good way for you novices out there, and the people getting started, one of the truest ways to gauge your worth pre-game, if you're beating totals by the number. Price is good. Price is very good. But price is also disparate book to book. I try and post the worst price and then compare it against the worst price because that's the movement, you know. Uh, again, there's so much nonsense in this industry and I, I really appreciate some of the professionals out there, pro betters like uh, Fezzik and uh, Chris from Las Vegas. These guys are very sharp. You should be following both on Twitter. Extremely sharp that care about helping people, but they're very good at calling out fakes. And they're the type of people that keep me in my lane because I was always more of a trader. But again, I know the stuff that'll get you fired as a trader. A lot of it is the stuff that'll get you fired as a handicapper. Except in handicapping, you seem to get rewarded if you're funny about it, which is I am. So I don't want to be rewarded for being the no-run first-inning stupidness, whatever. 19 parlay stupidness. All the stupid... I mean, so much stupidity. And again, that's part of why we've kind of ended up at the four. While the corporates are high, doing makeup hires, right, and hiring idiots, and that's just men and women alike that are stupid but look good, right? It's, a, it's something like they're going to fool you somehow with cameras. Get with it. It's 2022. I'm an uggo. I'm a fat uggo. And people would rather get their information from me because I live it. I breathe it. And I'm a player. I've played and bet at a professional level. Now, granted, it's not my pr primary source of income. Thank goodness. I've been getting smoked. But I have done it. You know, I spent the better part of two seasons betting professionally, you know, keeping a family alive. <laughs> that, that's my proof. My proof is my proof is my family is alive. I, I literally broke my back. You know, I have the spinal surgery scar to prove it. And, I, I you know, while I was, I was out of work, 
and they're not working. I fed my family and my home that I, you know, I own my place and my car and all that stuff. Again, own your stuff, people. You want good advice. I think if I do anything better than gambling advice, it's like life advice for poor people. Because remember, I come from zero. I come from, literally, I come from nothing. We never had anything. <coughs> I, I, you know, kids were getting cars for high school graduation. I graduated with honors from the best high school in the country, and I barely got a handshake. You know, that's what it is. We don't have it. You give a handshake because it's free. Other than that, you give what you got. So, you know, listen, we do the best we can, but when you come from nothing, you come from nothing. So that's why I give back to the people, and that's why people are like, man, I can't believe you got back to me. I come from zero. People helped me when I was zero, and now I'm zero plus something. I guess there's a decimal point in the same way. All right, enough of that. Let's get into it. So Juan Soto goes for 5 million bases today. Then give me the money line parlay. These are very good to us, and I think there's one more lesson. So... I know this comes across as some low-hanging fruit for handicapping, but again, I haven't done great. Pricing is working against us, and they're pulling my favorite play. So let's go back to our roots a la Rocky Three, right? Let's get the Eye of the Tigre, Ojo de Tigre going. And give me the Friar Tux. We have the distinct edge here. It's Clevenger over Abbott. We laid out the case against Abbott. Clevenger's been good, though. 3-6 ERA, 112 whip. He's been very good. He's winning inside the zone, 84%. Righties have a sub, 575 OPS. Give me all the Friar Tux today. And then Carlos Rodon up against Bryce Wilson. Carlos Rodon, 295 ERA, 107 whip. He has a 574 OPS on the year. He's been phenomenal. I think he's a 26% K minus walk. Yes, 23.5%. Uh, Came on his walk. Bryce Wilson is trash. The Giants, so they've hiccuped on offense. The Pirates are garbage. But because of those Giants issues, that's why I haven't been looking for the run line there. Though every time, I think the last two times we've done money line parlays, they've all hit as run line scores. Again, these are all based on my model, heavy plays. I'm just not trying to be guilty. And when you find good pricing and they equal plus 100, that's when I'll go for it. If this were not, I wouldn't make pairings that don't equal even money or better. Absolutely not. So... I think there might even be a lesson I was talking about briefly before we get out of here. Again, nuance and the context at the center of sustainability, why people like this show, or at least I hope they do. Well, they listen to it, whether or not they like it or not. I give you the basics. Remember, I'm appealing to the, the masses here. There are other ways to skin this, right? A hundred ways to skin a cat without scratching his arsehole. If I were to truly go in and sit down with like a professional looking to guarantee profit because they're betting enough money, that small percentage gains matters, right? That's why recreational betters are not going to play for 10%. They don't care about that. Part of the problem. I, now, my art, that is part of their problem and why they fail. But the professional betters, I'd be talking about, you know, setting your R. Remember, more betting doesn't mean more money risk. It should mean less. It, not less money risk, but it should mean... Almost, it should mean less risk because you're splitting the plays, hopefully being in a better probabilistic scenario with the ability to pay off. So I'd be putting enough money down on the center play, the this money line parlay, to profit with some. You know, take 100, say betting 60%, let's say 0.6 or 60 bucks on the money line parlay. If it hits 120, 20% gain if the rest of it goes flush. First of all, that's awesome right there. Take the rest of it and split that different ways. You know, on the run lines, on... You know, the pairing the run lines, and if you if you whack the Yahtzee, then boom, you hit it. But you always protected yourself for a gain, 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 gain. If you're managing the risk on the input, that type of gain, 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 gain is going to lead you to winning. And how is it able to be successful? So that'll do it. I hope that did it for you. Or the like button. I'm not sure what other shows are really doing this stuff. Not, we're not the sharpest, but, you know, we're not the we're not the roundest. <laughs> but <laughs> maybe there's something in there, man. I got some, maybe some marketing in there. The sharpest, roundest. I am the roundest and the sharpest, both at the same time. But one thing is for sure, I'm your favorite handicapper's favorite handicapper. Take that bad boy to the bank. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the Audio Only Pod. Remember, five-star views and likes before we pull the plug on the show. But again, we're not, you know, it's gone, but not goodbye, right? We're going to be doing football at 100 miles an hour. I have some, I promise you, call me out on this, clip this, and shove it in my fat face. I have something extra special in a brand new point of view and perspective for NFL betting that had Pat Mayo go, wow, which is what well, I think I could say about that. So when it hits, you'll know it hit you because you'll be seeing stars. It's going to be awesome. Um, I think that'll do it. Enjoy your day, man. And when we're done with the book, you enjoy that pay. I can't believe I had to do it twice. So twice, we so nice we did it twice. So twice, we did it nice. Gosh, I just got to get out of here. But I'm going to miss you when I'm gone doing a baseball show. Love you as much. Keep an eye on the tools. I'm going to run them all tomorrow as well. Everything's coming soon. Check me out on Twitter. MMN, Jock Market app. I think we got to everything. All right. Remember when you work this hard, it's a lot less like luck, yo. Yeah.